How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and today I've got a list of 10 really cool iPhone apps hopefully that you have not heard of before. I tried to pick ones that aren't super popular obviously and most of these are free. There's a couple that might cost a few dollars and even though these are iPhone apps some of them may also be available on Android as well and they can also probably be used on iPad. So why don't we just get started. The first of these is called Neighbors by Ring and I believe this is a relatively new app launched by the company Ring who makes those video doorbell cameras that basically allows you to see who's ringing your doorbell and it saves videos so you can see if there's anything suspicious and they actually created a really cool app that lets you kind of tie in with other people in your neighborhood and see reports that other people can leave for their neighbors. So say, I don't know, a suspicious person comes up to your door and you have a ring doorbell. You don't have to have one, by the way, to use the app, but if someone does and they get footage of it, they can upload it to this app and then everyone around can see and keep an eye out for this guy. Or maybe if someone actually broke into their house, they can use that for the police as evidence. And you can basically just set whatever location you're in. It uses your location for your phone, GPS, and then you can also set a radius for how far away you want to get reports from and it's actually just really cool and I don't know how often people will be uploading these depending on your area I guess people have to have it in your location or else you're not going to get any reports but it's still nice and probably especially more useful if you actually have a ring doorbell or one of their cameras and then you can actually share it with other people it might make them more likely to sign up as well. All right, now next up, number two, we got one called Sky Guide AR. And this is actually an app that Apple featured in one of their keynotes. And it's really cool, actually. Basically, it uses the AR kit to kind of overlay constellations and celestial bodies and satellites and that sort of thing over the sky. So you can actually look through the camera and look at the sky and maybe if you're in an area with lots of light pollution, then you don't have to worry about that. You can actually still see constellations and things. And it actually works in two different ways, potentially. Either you can use the camera, and it will overlay the constellations over the image in the camera, or you can use it without the camera, and it'll just purely use your GPS location and the compass to show you things in the sky, and it's not overlaid, but you could theor theoretically just even do it indoors because it just shows a picture of the sky, basically, if that makes sense. And like I said, you can choose a lot of different things you want it to show or not in the preferences. There's a whole list of toggles you can use, even things like uh, mythical creatures for the constellations and that sort of thing from like really old times. So it's pretty cool. It does cost a few dollars, I believe, this one. So it's not free, but still pretty cool. There might be free alternatives, though, on the App Store. This one's definitely the most popular and works really well as well. All right, moving on, number three. This one's called Habitica, and it's basically a gamified version of like a task list or daily to-do list. And the idea is that it's kind of like an RPG game. So you create a character, and then to gain experience, you do daily tasks that you set, and you can also choose one-time tasks as well. And then if you do these tasks, you gain experience for your character. And if you miss some of them, then you lose experience or health. And then you can also use some of that experience to like buy upgrades for your guy and that sort of thing. And it's got some social features as well. So it's got like guilds and like a tavern and you can actually invite friends to a party. And I think how that works is basically there's a group experience pool or something like that. And you can do like boss fights where I believe everyone has to do all their tasks and then you can beat the boss and get more experience or something like that. So it's just kind of a fun way where you actually do kind of get punished in a way if you don't do the tasks because your guy will lose experience and you can buy items like health potions and stuff if you start doing well again. It's pretty cool actually. This one I know is available on other platforms. It's not just an app. There's also a web interface so you don't have to use it on iPhone if you want so that's pretty cool. I like this app. I've used it in the past, kind of fell off the wagon for it a few times but maybe I'll start using it again. All right, next up, number four, this one's called What the Font? And it has one very simple purpose, and that is to identify what fonts you're pointing the camera at. So it's a really cool feature where, I don't know, maybe if you're into design or you see a cool weird font just out in the opens, walking around, and you're like, I wonder what font that is. Does no one else do that? No one? But <laughs> you point the camera at it, take a picture, and then it does have a feature where it will automatically try to detect all the 
characters and text in the image, but I find that to be like really slow, barely works. So you can manually select the text and that works a lot better. Now it's not super accurate all the time. If it's a custom font, like a custom logo, there might not be a name for that font. It might just be for that logo. So it'll try to do its best to find a very similar font. And usually it is good at least at finding a similar font where it might be close enough for the purpose of what you want to use with it. And then it also does give you the option to buy the font. So if you don't know, not all fonts are free. So if you don't have it on your computer, you can actually buy it and then install it that way. All right, number five, another augmented reality app. This one's called Hologo, and it's basically like an educational lesson kind of thing that uses AR to visually show you a virtual image of whatever lesson it's trying to show. So there's a few different ways you can do it. There's like demos that you don't require an account, and then there's some that you need to sign up to see. But basically you download whatever lesson, and then it will show you in the virtual world that you're pointing the camera at in the space and kind of give you a little bit of information. For example, there's one that is like geography and it kind of opens a portal looking thing that you can look through and show you like the Roman Colosseum or whatever, pretty cool. And then there's another one that I really like that is like the uh, motor, so it's like a physics lesson. So you can see the motor in the virtual space and then you can actually expand it out. So it shows all the components and then you can kind of walk around and see how everything fits together. Some of these are kind of weird with the interface. It's probably not that practical. It's kind of very basic, but some of those like that motor actually could be useful. So it's really de gonna depend on which ones actually make sense to use this virtual reality feature instead of just like watching a video or something. Next, number six, this one's really basic and it's actually by Google. It's called Tasks by Google. And it, like the name suggests, is a tasks app where you can basically just kind of make a very basic checklist and it's not as powerful as some other checklists you might see, but what I do like is it's just dead simple design, it looks really nice, and you can actually create subtasks. So if you have a multiple part thing you need to do and you wanna be able to break it down and make it more manageable, you can create a main task and then add subtasks and check those off one at a time. And you can also add a little bit more information like details that will show up in the list and a date that it's due, for example. And it will also sync between devices. So that's really nice. If you download it even on Android, there's an Android version, it'll show it if you add something on the iOS app. So yeah, this is, it's very basic. It's almost like a demo that Google made. I don't know if they're gonna really keep up with it or add much stuff to it, but if you just want a super simple thing that you can use, this might not be a bad idea. All right, next is number seven, and this one's gonna be kind of hard to explain because it's actually really powerful, but also like really complicated. So I'll try my best. And it's called Workflow, and it basically lets you create automated macros, if you know what that is, it's kind of like being able to program different actions on your phone to simplify certain tasks so you don't have to keep doing it. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you open up the interface, you can create an action and then it'll give you a list of all sorts of things it can do. So for example, take a photo and then it'll add that to the list of actions it'll do in order or another one is like copy a URL or take something from the clipboard, a lot of different stuff and then you can set the order and it will automate and do those things when you click play. So let me show you what I mean. In one of the tutorial examples, it has one that lets you make a GIF. So what that does is first action is take photos and you can select how many photos, three, and then it will make a GIF from those photos automatically. And then the next thing we'll do is show preview and then it'll let you see the thing. And then finally, it'll prepare it into a message to send to someone. So this lets you literally click play and then automatically in one fell swoop, create a GIF out of what you're looking at and send it to someone. So that's just a very basic example. And even with that one, there's a ton of other actions you can do. So instead of sending it to a friend through a message, you can have it post Instagram or airdrop or upload the image to Imager or resize the GIF. I mean, it's really limitless and kind of overwhelming for me to even try to explain. Hopefully you get the idea and you can kind of see how many things it can do. So really, I just encourage you to just download it and install it and just mess around with it. And you might not even know where to start, but 
maybe down the line, you'll notice yourself doing something in a phone repeatedly and you think, all right, maybe I can actually fix it with this app. Okay, number eight, this one's called Stringify and this one's also really powerful and it's kind of similar to what we just talked about with workflow except this one mostly focuses on like home automation devices and stuff. So the last one we just talked about was actions on your phone. This one's like real life actions in your house. If you've ever heard of an app called If This Then That, it's kind of similar to that, where it ties together a whole bunch of different services like Nest, you can log in and control your Nest devices or like Philips Hue or anything else and then you can basically use this Stringify app to create automations based on any of these connected services and have it do multiple things in sequence. And when you do this, you create a so-called flow and like the name suggests, you basically just have an ordered list of actions for what you want it to do first and how you want it to respond if something else happens. Again, kind of like programming with real life. But what I really like about this and what you might not have realized is if you have an Amazon Echo, then you can really take advantage of this because the flows actually are able to be used as virtual devices in a routine with Amazon Echo. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example of one I actually made. So I wanted my Amazon Echo to be able to just use a certain keyword that I would say and then it would do a bunch of stuff like turn on the lights in the morning and set the thermostat to a certain temperature. But for some reason, believe it or not, Amazon Echo does not let you do that with a Nest thermostat. It doesn't let you set the temperature as part of a routine. You, can, you have to do it like one at a time, which is kind of stupid. But this Stringify app I can use as like a workaround to do that. So what I did was in Stringify, I created a flow that starts out with an action in Amazon Echo that will show up as a device in the Amazon Echo app. And then after that thing is activated, it will change the temperature of the thermostat, very simple. So I can now put that as part of multiple things the Amazon Echo will be doing as part of a routine. And that's just one example with Amazon Echo. You can tie these flows in with all sorts of services and do really whatever you want. And that's just what I did. And it made things a lot easier and more useful. All right, coming near the end, we got a couple more. And number nine is called Air Measure. And this is another one that uses augmented reality. So you might need a relatively modern iPhone that supports the AR kit, but hopefully it'll work anyway. And what this app does is uses the augmented reality API and the camera in your phone to actually measure distances and sizes of things in real life just by pointing the camera at it. But it also has a ton of other tools you can use as well that we can talk about. So you can see how it works. You basically just point it at one object and then you can tap the thing and then drag it over to another object and it'll try to measure the distance. It's not 100% accurate all the time, obviously. I wouldn't use this on something that needs to be critically accurate. But if it is inaccurate, you can generally move the phone around and it'll even prompt you to do that and it will become a lot more accurate after you do that. And there's a ton of other tools you can do. You can bring up tools and you can basically have it kind of lock the measurement to the floor, which is really useful. Or you can even have it basically identify a wall and then virtually show you how big a certain TV size would look on that wall. So if you're putting up a painting or something even, it'll have that tool. And there's a bunch of other random tools, a surprising amount really, like measuring the height of objects automatically or even the trajectory of things. I mean, you could really go crazy with this app. I would think it's just pretty fun to literally look through all the tools. And again, it's not super duper accurate, but it's more fun if you need like a rough guess, might be worth checking out. All right, finally, number 10, this one is called Tab, and it's an app that basically lets you split a bill really easily if you're at a restaurant with friends. Now that sounds like it might be kind of stupid and dead simple, but it actually has a surprising number of convenient features that you might not have thought of. So basically what it does is you can actually scan a receipt. You take a picture of it and it will automatically recognize the text and basically recreate the line items on that receipt so you can actually choose who bought what things and it'll use that in the calculation. So you enter your name and then you can choose which things you bought and it'll add up your total. And then it'll have a share code where if everyone else has the same app, they can literally type that in and kind of share the receipt on their own app or you can manually add everyone and select their items in each tab that way. But in any case, after you do that, it'll split it up and then 
tell you which people owe which amount depending on how much they bought and it also takes into account the tax and the tip and everything like that. And also interestingly, it kind of ties in with Venmo, that's like the PayPal app that lets you send money to friends. So if you wanted, everyone could kind of sign up with that and whoever pays the bill can automatically get paid by your friends. So it, there's a lot of convenient features built in. Maybe it's just a glorified calculator, but it does make things easy, I think, if the waiter didn't split up the check. So I think that's it. Hopefully you guys found this video pretty helpful. If you have any other really cool apps that you think might be obscure, you can let us know down in the comments. We can check them out. And also be sure to check down there. Maybe someone else did come up with some good ones you'll want to see. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every week multiple times, so it should be worth it. And of course, if you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here that you can click on. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.